A shard of glass dominating the capital skyline over London Bridge. It's already the tallest building in Britain at more than 235 metres high. And by 2012, the skyscraper will reach a towering 310 metres into the skies, making it the highest in the European Union. The man behind it, Italian architect Renzo Piano, sketched out his original design on the back of a menu and admits he didn't even like tall buildings when he began the project. Our culture editor, Matthew Kane, has been taking a look up. This is the latest addition to the London skyline. Designed to look like a shard of glass, it will house a mix of office space, restaurants, bars, shops and apartments, as well as a public gallery offering views like these. Although it won't be finished until 2012, this week the shard reached 244 metres high, officially becoming Britain's tallest building. I'm on the 31st floor of the Shard and as you can see the views of London are absolutely sensational. But when this building is eventually finished it will be a massive 87 storeys high, easily dwarfing Britain's previous tallest building, Canary Wharf. The Shard was designed to reflect London's history as well as London's future. It's uh, London and this location in particular on the bank of the River Thames and uh, the historic references to London, a city of mass and spires built on trade and international commerce. At the same time, it's a very contemporary building and reflects uh, London as a creative capital, if you like. But before it's even finished, the Shard is dividing opinion among critics of architecture. I think out of all the skyscrapers that are now coming up in central London, this is the most elegant and the most impressive and probably the one that will uh, gain London's affection in the way that the Gherkin has. I think it's just too big and I think I worry about it in terms of what it does to everything and everything else around it. I think there is a sense that London's history here is being um, changed and changed irre irrevocably. Love it or loathe it, the Shard has a greater significance than mere aesthetics. There's a growing awareness of the psychology behind buildings like this and their broader cultural relevance. Only cities, I think, with a sense of a sort of self-doubt, really, identity crisis type cities that have to feel that they have to put up these kind of high-rise buildings to give themselves a new identity. In fact, in the case of London, it had a very good identity before. I'm broadly in favour of this building. Well, I think what we've got to worry about, and I certainly worry about, is what it brings in its wake. In other words, when you get one tall building, we see this all over London, you start to get second-rate tall buildings clustering around it. We see that happening in the City of London, and there's already plans being approved for one or two rather lesser tall buildings around that one over there. So I think that if you're not careful, you lose that landmark characteristic and you start to get just another jungle of buildings which could be anywhere. And this is what London's latest landmark will look like when it's finished. When it was first designed, it was intended to be the tallest building in Europe. But already it's been overtaken by the 380 metre Mercury City Tower in Moscow. It seems that the worldwide obsession with taller and taller buildings isn't going to end just yet.